begin our approach, please make sure that all seats are in the upright position and trays are clearly. What's happening? What's good with the Lit Read? What's good, good people? Welcome to another vlog. And if you haven't been able to tell by now, welcome to Greece. Yeah, I actually just touched down not too long ago. I'm at my hotel right here, smack dead in the city of Athens. Dog, I'm, I'm super excited, you feel me? I'm trying to curate some high quality black travel content, you feel me? Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring you here, you dig? Like I'm trying to bring you into my world, you know what I mean? So you can, you know what I mean? Get up out your four corners of the world and come see something different, you feel me? Before we go any further, please go ahead and hit that notification bell first. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel at G is International first and go ahead and follow your boy on Instagram at G is International, you dig? Let's get into this. So like I said, I'm actually out here in Athens right now. The hotel I'm located in is called the Athens Gate Hotel. It's literally smack dead within the center of Athens. And it's dope because if you're new to here or if you, you know, if you're local, you know what I mean? Everything that you kind of want to see is within walking distance. The Temple of Zeus is about two minutes across the street. And what most people come here to see the Acropolis, depending on how you walk, about five to 10 minutes away from you. So everything that you want to see as far as like sightseeing and UNESCO sites is always within walking distance right here from the Athens Gate Hotel. Depending on the room that you get, you can get a balcony. And y'all know how I be, I like me a good old balcony. You can get you a room with some dope views. And if you can see, ladies and gentlemen, I literally got a view of the Temple of Zeus smack dead right there and right back up there somewhere on this high little mountain we're gonna figure out what that is it's something high sitting up there the elevation is crazy it's just overlooking all of us but it's something right there so if you're out here in athens i would definitely recommend the athens gate hotel so let's talk about greece for a second greece is actually located in the southeastern part of Europe and it's numerous islands that make up Greece and that surround the Aegean Sea. From art and philosophy and guys like Plato and Socrates who are deemed as some of the originators of democracy, Greece and specifically Athens is known as the cradle of Western civilization. Now, like most of us, when we think of Greece and ancient Greece, we think of their mythology and their religion. Most of us know of their Olympic gods or have at one point heard of their Olympic gods. Some of them being Zeus, Hades, Poseidon, Ares, Hermes, Athena. That's all Greek culture, y'all. Because Greece has such a rich playground when it comes to their mythology, you got so many creations in modern day times, such as games like God of War, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. You got movies such as Clash of the Titans. Yo, Greek mythology is something else. It is absolutely something else. So look, this is what we gonna do. We gonna pack up some gear, we're gonna head out into the city. I'm gonna show y'all a little bit of the sights and I hope y'all gonna come along and enjoy the day with the kid. Come along, man. Come enjoy Athens with your boy, you feel me? Let's go do this. Okay, okay. So, my first stop out here in Athens is actually probably one of the most historical and iconic sites that you think of when you think of Athens out here in Greece. That location being the Acropolis of Athens. I generally feel like you'd be tripping if you didn't take some time and actually come out and check out the Acropolis out here. It's probably one of the first things that come to mind when you think of Greece and Athens. It's literally Athens crown jewel out here. It's very important and it's also considered one of the most important archaeological sites ever found in the world. The Acropolis in itself, it's one of the highest points out here in Athens. It's not the highest, but it's one of the highest points. And from numerous spots throughout this city, you can see this thing literally everywhere, just sitting up tall, staring down at you. The 
It almost reminds me of being out in Cairo near my hotel, like five minutes away from the pyramids. It's like every time you came outside, every time you hit the balcony, every time you open a window as you was walking through the streets, you could literally see these huge monumental objects just in the air. It's almost like sometimes you really just gotta stop and be in awe and be like, yo, people had the knowledge and the strategies and the wisdom to put this stuff up. It's, it's really dope. This thing has been around for a long time. It's actually estimated to have been built around 525 BC, not AD, BC. It's been a home to numerous king. It's been converted into a citadel. A lot of the buildings that are on top of it have been turned into churches and things like that. It's been a home just to praise the gods. And obviously today, it's a tourist attraction. I swear it's funny when you're out here like recording and trying to get footage and stuff like that. People just be staring at you for one because you're a black man. But you're a black man with dreads and they trying to figure out your like. How'd your hair get like that? Like, what the hell you got going on on top of your head? And combine all that, you got a camera in your face, so everybody trying to be nosy and pay attention to what you got going on. Actually, it's kind of empowering, and it's actually one of those kind of things to where you got to do what the hell you want to do. And you got to live life the way you want to live your life. And you can't let people staring at you or trying to be nosy stop you from doing what you want to do. Because if you do that, you're not gonna be able to live how you wanna live, dog. Trust and believe. And I'm trying to get to a point to where I can make this my dog on job. We actually gonna make our way inside the Acropolis and check out a few of these sites. Unfortunately, I would have loved to bring my camera in there and vlog. I like to create high quality travel vlogs which means not only does my picture quality need to be up to par, my audio quality needs to be up to par. For some strange reason, after all my research, I see that they do not allow you to have mics in there. And I feel like it would be an injustice to bring my camera in there with no mic, wind blowing, and it would just sound terrible. It would absolutely sound terrible, and I don't even wanna put y'all through that. So. You might see some changes here and there as far as talking about the Acropolis and the things inside, but best believe we're going to make it work. Let's go ahead and get this thing cracked. Okay, so within the Acropolis, there are many things that you can see. Right along the outside of the Acropolis, before you actually walk up and make your ascension of the Acropolis, you can see the Temple of Asclepios, you can see the Theater of Dionysus, and you can see the Odeon of Herodes Atticus. The interesting thing about the Odeon of Herodes Atticus is that while everything else on the Acropolis kind of serves as more or less like tourist attractions, the Odeon of Herodes Atticus actually still is a theater and concert venue that still remains active and live today. Actually, while I was there, you could actually see the people setting up the music equipment for whatever musical concert that they was finna have. That thing can easily fit up to three to 5,000 people. All right, so outside of those three parts, I wanna start talking about some of the main pieces that are actually on top of the Acropolis. So the first piece is the Propylaea. The only thing that the Propylaea served as was just a grand entrance into the entire Acropolis. Today, when you look at it, there's a few things that you're gonna find. You're gonna find these large stone pillars. And I mean, they're, they're almost fascinating just to look at them pillars themselves. You're gonna see tourists just out, just taking pictures and all that type of stuff. But if you could picture it, it was literally a gateway to within the Acropolis. It was built back in 437 BC, and all of this was directed and built by the man that led Athens during its golden age, a man by the name of Pericles. He had the vision, he had the design for this entire Acropolis, and as well as the Propylaea. The next piece I want to talk about is the Erechtheion. Now, the Erechtheion was actually dedicated to two different gods. While mostly everything on top of the Acropolis was dedicated to Athena, this temple in particular was actually dedicated to two gods. One, being Poseidon. Two, actually being Athena. And the temple was split in half. Poseidon having his worship being on one side and Athena having her worship being on the other back side of the temple. This temple in itself was built anywhere between 421 and 406 BC. To be honest, I think the real stars of this particular temple, even in today's time, as well as in years past, will be the six female caryatids. Now, you can see them from a mile away. Specifically, if you're standing at a certain point, you'll see six women to where they look like they're holding this roof. Interestingly, if you were looking at it, you would think those are the real structures, but to be honest, they aren't. They're actually in the Acropolis Museum. And in all actuality, there's really only five of them in the Acropolis Museum. How interesting is it 
that one of them remains in the British Museum and the people that run that British Museum refuse to return that one carrotid back to Greece and into the Acropolis Museum. Just like a lot of the other structures on the Acropolis, this temple has seen its fair share of changes as well as destruction from natural disaster. It's been converted into a Christian church. It's been converted into a palace by the Franks and even by the Ottoman Empire, the Turkish governor turned it into a haram. Finally, the last piece that I wanna talk about is literally the monument that everybody comes to the Acropolis to see. That is the world famous Parthenon. When you visit the Parthenon out of all the structures there, I guarantee you this one will have people flooded and surrounded that thing on all four sides. It was originally built in 447 BC and it kind of serves as like a symbol of ancient Greek civilization. Like this was their prize trophy, especially in Athens. I mentioned him earlier, but the man that led Athens through its golden age, Pericles, was the mastermind and the brain behind the Parthenon. With the help from an architect named Phidias, they made this whole thing come to fruition. Just as with the rest of these other structures, when different invaders came in and they conquered, they changed the Parthenon into different things. Natural disaster, literally explosions happening within the Parthenon have all contributed to the way the Parthenon looks today. After the Persians came in and wrecked shop, I would say the final blow came in when the Ottoman Empire decided to turn the Parthenon into an ammo depot. On one fateful day when beef was happening, somebody shot something right at that Parthenon. Whether they knew it was ammo in there or not, that thing blew up and pfft, the rest was history when it comes to the construction of that building, for real. Like I said earlier, if you're not there, it's kind of hard to picture like what the Acropolis could have actually looked like back in the day. With all that said, I love video games. And one of my favorite games ever in life is Assassin's Creed. And just about two years ago, they put out Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which was literally based out of Greece. And the thing I loved about that game is that they went into super detail to recreate and kind of get an actual idea of what ancient Greece, Athens, and the Acropolis used to look like. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put about 45 seconds to a minute worth of time on the clock. I'm gonna give y'all some of this good Ubisoft Assassin's Creed Odyssey B-roll. So this way, y'all can not only have seen what the Acropolis looked like today, but you can kind of get an idea of what that full thing was looking like back in the day. Let's get into it. Finally getting me something to eat. I've been walking all doggone day. I left at like three and it's now like 7, 7.30 and I'm just now eating since breakfast. I've been walking around the Acropolis area. I must say it was dope, but well worth it. And as you can see, I got this nice little beer right here. Generally, every time I like to travel, I like to get a beer from that particular country. So yeah, I got me a nice little Mythos Greek original beer right here, you feel me? I'm actually at this restaurant. It's called Daphne's Authentic Greek Cuisine. It was recommended to me as soon as I got here. This restaurant is located in this district called Plaka. Plaka in itself, it's, a, it's one of the older areas of Athens. And it's literally like just this area, interconnected, small, narrow lanes and roads where you got shops, bars, and restaurants all over the place. Real dope spot. So I may butcher the name, but my main dish that I got is this dish called moussaka. It's a famous national and one of the better cuisines out here in Greece. It's a potato or eggplant type dish mixed with ground beef and other stuff kind of mixed and jumbled into it. So man, Greece, I'm gonna try something new. We gonna see how this thing hit, you dig? Thank you. 
If you're in Greece, please try some of this traditional Greek cuisine, man. Don't come here just be trying to eat wings and, and french fries and burgers and all that, man. Like, tap into the culture, dog. Like, that's what this whole traveling thing is definitely about. Anyways, man, go ahead and wrap this thing up for the day. Doing all that walk, I'm absolutely beat. I can't even lie. If you followed along, I appreciate you coming along for the journey. I hope you're seeing something that you ain't never seen before. I hope it inspires you one day to come on out and see some of this stuff or just go travel period to wherever you got your heart set on or wherever your heart calls you. Please go ahead and hit that notification bell so you can get them notifications on when some more videos is dropping immediately and you can check them things out. Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. All you gotta do is type in G space is space international. You'll find me right there. Please go ahead and follow your boy on Instagram at the same name, at G is international. And man, until next time, G out. Thank you.